Hey everyone, Dalai here. I want to try to do another code dive episode. And the idea today is to see how far I can get and I have a lot of time. It's going to be slightly more than one hour, maybe two top. To try to get a visualization for the different flows in geometry node. Uh, in a geometry node tree, usually we have the main flow of the geometry. And then we have also the secondary flow of the function which are the fields and things which are evaluated. Uh, there's a blog post on code.blender.org that explains it a little bit better. Uh, we have a task for this, which we created those days and with some detail. We have a reference commit. I've also talked to some developers about how, do, how to implement that. So I have some clues, but the main idea is just to be able to navigate the code and then talk out loud about the process of doing so. Not so much about getting into the solution, which no idea if you're gonna get it. Let's start as always by having a nice simple file. I have one already that uh, that illustrated the problem. Uh, this is a simple file file using fields, something that's not in master just yet. Let's make this nice and big okay. here is a little node tree to basically based on the position based on the position of the vertices of the cube to uh, translate them in a direction so what i'm doing if i hide this to work yep so basically i'm taking the cube and then having the position and I'm adding a value to it, but but I want to do this only for part of the node. And the interesting thing here is that we have one main flow here, which is a so-called data flow. So the geometry is being passed through. And then we have another flow here. Uh, and have a secondary flow, which is the function flow. The data here is only evaluated uh, in the node once we get a geometry. So the node gets a geometry and then it goes back and reads everything that's been passed to it. Then we here as well for the selection. So what we're aiming with this <clears throat> project is to have those lines here dashed. That simple. Right, so you can tell in a glance if we're zooming out, you can tell, oh, this is my main data flow, this is my function flow. You can also tell then, you can also tell then by their socket type. This is using a branch already, uh, basically a patch that Jack Luke is it's been working on. So I think it's already going to help a little bit. So I can already tell a little bit then apart. But it is to enhance this to the next level. Whew, let's get started. Um, basically, I know that. What do I know? I did in the past, I contributed some of the dash line shader, so for me, it's not that much alien. So basically, we have some. Let's make this bigger. There we go. We have already like some shaders in Blender to handle dashed lines, which is simply doing these in the fragment shader. So this, for example, oh, this is a fragment shader itself, and it's basically discarding it. Uh, for anyone not familiar with OpenGL, OpenGL SL, basically we have a program that draw the points. And then for each pixel in the scene, uh, in, in what you just draw, you can apply something on top of it. In our case, we're literally just discarding the dashed line. Just so you can see, if I have a, let's do it differently. If I have a parent camera, it's probably going to be hard to see in the video. Uh, you cannot really see. Maybe here. This is a dashed line. Let's save this as. Okay. 
cube and if I say and tell this never to be discarded ideally they should make it disappear we're not really using the shader so this is more an example uh, it did not work so it's probably using the, one of the other dashed line shaders we have oh of course the 3d line oh i got the fragment shader for a 3d line very interesting i don't see it here oh dash is form in screen space i have a feeling that the dash line in this case Calculate even outside of this, but let's go to another part of Blender that has already dashed line, like the outliner. If this is the parent of this one, shift parent. Here we see the dashed lines, and with the new build, you should not see the dashed lines. So let's open the file again. Oh, that was a different block file. If this is part of this one. I see I still see the dash lines. Why? This is about right. As you can see I'm not only a bit rusty. <clears throat> but overall no idea. Did it really compile? Did I run the right blender? That's not the one I wanted. Mm. No. I think I forgot to save this one, but. Ah, dash line is still working here. Even though we discard we stopped then from discarding them. And compile fine, right? Yep. yep. No idea. Which is fine because you're not really using this as a base. <laughs> Man, this is so not working. But let me explain a little bit what I learned so far from the code on, or what we're looking at. Basically, Blender has a bunch, since we migrated from uh, OpenGL to OpenGL 3, doing 2.80, we had to make sure that everything we do use the latest greatest OpenGL technology which means you you're using vertex and fragment shader for in pretty much everything we draw um oh there's a node link so in this case we have a line so how how do we do the um, overall line the da dashed lines we basically we know for each of the pixels of the drawing how far we are into the line what you see here um, and based on that we know whether or not to dash the line again it, it I hate it that you cannot really see it in my little test but that's okay now for the node links we also have a pair of nodes which are used here then there's a bit annoying in that regard because if you want to know when we're using those you actually need to look for Uh, node link vert, I think it's node link. See, that's the kind of illustrate the problem. It's as up first as altogether. Sure. I think you're using a macro for those things. Here. So Blender first. Blender has a way to convert those codes to C code. Then you save them as this here. So uh, oh, I have instance and the other one. I think that's the main one. So basically, you need to go here and any place in the code that's calling this is probably using the oh, it's using the shader, which in our case is here and here. Uh, where are we? Batch draw for the node link. And which function is this one? 
Let the draw link busier. Let's just hack them around to just to see if you if you if you hide this one. If this function no longer runs, what do you get? It's only me or the UI change didn't get saved, you know. There. Let's have some things. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I cannot see my lines <laughs> because we basically made this function to not run. So it's good. So we found at least the function that uh, is calling the drawings, the drone itself. I was talking to Fleman and he said that the way this works at the moment is that we are basically drawing every single the program we, we draw every single point and then we shuffle them to make the line inside the shader node which is basically here there's creating the batch builder so we're actually passing the handle I need to look at it also spoiler alert a really very noob when it comes to Curve code. Sorry. So curve code. So the whole Bezier calculation is going to be beyond me. But that's okay. Let's focus on. Let's take a look at the. Let's take a look at the shader that is actually drawing those lines. If anything, maybe it helps us to to illustrate the problem. To the node link and. Hold on, let's close everything. Is this right? Yeah, going to true true. And give me the Cadona on the node link. Huh. Wow. Okay, the fragment shader in this one is doing almost nothing. Just for fun, let's for instance say that frag color. Well, uh, in fact, too, right? Let's see if that builds. If it's fair, you're gonna see it now actually. Oh, there you go. Okay, beautiful. That's where you are. Um, if instead we do. But this is how we do kind of an aliasing. Um, but let's instead try to just discard. And of course, this is gonna. I hope the shader optimizes itself. So basically, this is gonna make sure the whole thing doesn't draw because we're discarding every single see? every single pixel, and then just so we take a quickly look at the code. I'm curious to understand where. Are we using the BZs? So P0, P1, P2. Let's. Uh, fascinating. <laughs> Not pretending I'm fully understand what's happening here, but kind of aligns to what uh, Klima was telling me. Oh, so we have T. T is how far? So that's the T, right? T, T1, T, 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 T2, 
two t two times three. Three basically is how far we are into the curve. Let's try to also we have the UV already here. Wow, I think we probably need what I have to do is to to calculate the UV. So basically how far we are into the curve on the jump on the vertex shader. <clears throat> but for now let's try something interesting which is to basically take the UV and have this affecting the shader node. So I want to use the UV as a color over there. If I just go and try to use it here, it shouldn't work. Because you need to expose these in the as a how do we call it this as an out in and out as the but I think I probably let's where's the UV again? UV here. Forgot the the, the the in out but let's do a new out. See I call UV dash. It simply is gonna be that's before and I know that makes this whole thing chaotic. Just show what happens if I don't pass the UV there. It's gonna build fine. The problem is always when running it. Okay. Because those shaders are compiled in runtime and ah, you cannot. But don't worry. We're just about to fix that. Let's fall in love. And there's an in. Oh. And I think the problem with the UV itself is just that it's, a, it's linear. Technically, if you change, that can be interesting. Oh, sorry. Undefined variable UV. Oh, UV dash. Sorry. Did I forgot to remove the? No, they're probably all zero zero. I forgot to initialize it. So what's happening there? It's very simple. UV dash is zero because it didn't set any value. So we get the same red color we got before. Because then the color is the one zero zero. Let's do this. But what I'm trying to think is I would say it's probably like out there trying to do it as far as just having the the lines when they are not curved to work. And then let them on have fun doing the curve lines. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh my god. <laughs> that is so beautiful. Honestly, I think that's all we need. Oh, wow. That is so beautiful. Do you see that? So we already have... Beautiful. Does it change if it's... I think even, yeah, there's only the UVX, technically, not even UV, it's a float, let's call, I'm going to call T dash, because it's, I'll find a better name very soon, but, so no, let's let's keep to the old, uh, let's keep to the old name. Who cares? And of course, is a float. I'm already. I want to change the name. Let's call it um, line. I think it's T the name for that. How far you are into the line. But let's give it a more. Let's call it T. No, let's call it 
Sometimes name is the hardest. A line. You. There we go. And I want only the this to affect. I want G to be that. Just because my just a theory, but I think this is gonna get us the same. Give me that, and then I'm gonna try to invert it. Uh, line U, line U. But I do remember in. Take the same result as before, and I'm pretty sure if you do. The Y. I'm pretty sure this is no. Let's find out. What? <laughs> Anyways, we're happy with the previous value. We also need to know, okay, that's very interesting. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> we also need to know um, how large, how big is my entire curve, the entire segment. So I can know, given the line U, given the line U, we know how far how many real units when you're we're skipping it. Um, this I think I'm just gonna cheat for now, and, but in the future it would be nice to calculate ideally once for the whole curve, but you can just do it. Uh, line uh, length. Uh, to do. We want to do it once for the whole curve, but we can do it once per vertex. It's, it's fine. But the result's gonna be the same. This should be easy to calculate with those blah blah blah. I can try to find a formula and then to calculate that. I can ask Hans, he's probably know it. Let's pretend this is. I was thinking about like some arbitrary number, but let me check something here. Actually, we want all of those values as well. I'm gonna copy those in a bit. I'm just interested on what's the unit here. Shouldn't matter, right? Let's pretend it's one. One what? Let's uh, call these what they are uh, parameters for the dashed line. Okay. So line length we need to calculate still. Honestly, we need to do it actually here. Go back to our other shader. Right, and then the other values for now. I'm not gonna pass it. I don't even, I'm not even, I don't remember if the non perspective means it doesn't get the thing interpolated. I can quickly check this. Perspective. <laughs> it's not what it wants, what we use though. Well, because the effect is in. 2D. I don't know. Uh, okay, so my point is like all these. Maybe I need to spend some time understanding these, but I won't. Uh, 
colors length. So what we need now, um, I want this to be more than one. I want this to be like five because first we get a. Let's first calculate. This is a bit interesting. It's gonna be a bit boring because it's not so much about the blender. It's more about you know, the shader as a whole. But I hope it's still interesting. And we want to know how do you do that? Have the overall thing. Let's start copying some code around to understand what you mean. Normalize distance. Oh, just the t. We just want t to be divided by x amount of. Okay, that's a dash read. It. So let's get dash read it as a define. Later we can replace it as a. Uniform. Mm. Okay. And then frac is the fraction part of the equation, I think. Fract uh, JL cell. Add a fractional part. So x minus four. This, supposed, <coughs> this is supposed to be the easy part. Let's start simple. So if, and that's really bad coding, but where's my, if line u, oh, I need to know the line u in absolute terms. So let's even do that. Just you can normalize everything. You're gonna do the other way around. So line u, I'm gonna call it absolute. Go line length times line u. I want to be. I don't. I don't want to use this for now. So be around. But what I want to do for a quick test is this. If it's blah blah blah, discard. Also curious about oops. Oh, int. <laughs> also gonna do something, gonna save my default file. So it's always Beautiful, so beautiful. And does it matter if it's curved or not? <laughs> I love uh, working on visual code is so much fun. Always oh, so much fun. It's beautiful. Well, first, now what what I want to do instead is to actually use the absolute number. I'm curious about the what we use elsewhere. Okay, so that's very uh, which int is that though? Oh, also because the I'm not using the real distance calculation, right? I'm using five, so it's it's not even proportional. Okay, that's now let's do. <laughs> Let's do our first really cheap dash line. If uh, it's bigger, check this out. Uh, 
want people at home to cringe uh, and or let me get are we oh we don't have a uh, clank format so in blender we have clank format for formatting the code which means basically if i I, for instance, not following the Blender style, if I added a plane, plane of space here and I save. Oh, my computer is not running blank format, so never mind. But it should alt format. So I ignore that mm, small intermediate, small intermission. Okay, let's compile while we think. All right, so here. Okay. I really want to set up. Um, oh, can I do that? Yeah, that's the whole point of this, right? <laughs> to to show how developers work. Plank mm, format. Does this to exist? Yep. What I will do, I will go over the Blender, Plank format documentation, how to, that's what we want. No, I'm on VS Code, sorry. I'm pretty sure I have it already. Let's let's try it. Oops. Copy it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, sometimes I get so lost at the. There we go. No, it's not running. I, okay. Can run it manually. Oh, that's so bad. Check this out. Come on, people. All the clank format. Let's do some intermission to something interesting. I'm going to commit something. Uh, okay. Uh, I should just ignore it and continue. But I won't. Okay, now go back to master, make sure I have the latest. So just basically I'm gonna do a small commit to fix. And then here. Just running client format in the whole master. As you see, some developers like myself, and I can even tell who it is, but they're not running playing format on their computer. And it's pretty much, most of it is harmless, but make format. Okay. Going back. To where we are. And yep. I think we don't run Clank Former for the JLS files yet. So, uh, continue. 
four, five. So nasty, but it's beautiful. I think I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna share this with the team just to, to get their reaction. Compile is gonna take a bit longer now because we are we updated Blender pretty much. Shouldn't shouldn't have it. Now let's uh, let me think for you meanwhile. So to do get a real extension, get a line absolute. And the formula is really this, it's really... Oh shit, don't save. Um, let's get a dashed. And now we want the normalized. Wow. What it's actually doing here is a trick to not use if and else, I'm pretty sure. Just an optimization trick. Because every time you do an if else, if else, it can create branching code in the which for shaders is really bad. Because the you know when it comes to GPU coding, one of the benefits of you know something like fragment shader that can run in parallel, all the pixels can be calculated at the same time. And if you start branching out, we have Pixels running in different speed, different programs. That's as technical as I can get, but it's not so good. So I think this is just a wait for them to have a color for every pixel, whether it's dashed or not. I think. Or for fading out. Then what the really wants to calculate and do and find let's ha ah, look at this so beautiful I wanna do this for a complete line so nice No, that's that's. I'm gonna share this already. <laughs> but it won't be much harder than that, I believe. Let's go to Blender chat. Just let me double check to see if everything's fine. Yeah. Jump to node. And ask Hans if he has a. Wait, do you have a formula to get the Bezier length bit on the Bezier? Now let's go back to, to the video. Let's share the code just for fun. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Did I copy it? Let's copy it. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, of course, we don't want to do this, but but it's correct. I was trying to think if it's the, the principle is correct, and it is. And it's stretching because we don't get the real the real line line length. How hard should it be? I'll do a knock, I'll do something like a, a little hack. <clears throat> I'll do calculate this just based on the distance between the 
first point and the, and the last point. Okay. I don't remember this function distance. Is it built in? Can I call the vec2? So <clears throat> this MBT2 vec2 is going to be. Oh, sorry, uh, P3. Right? Uh, clearly not good. Why? Now, how do I know what is the data that we're getting here? I have no idea to know. Um, let's multiply by a value. Nope. Let's go the other way. I don't want to adjust the my our manual. Actually, actually, I'm curious if you ever if this ever get dashed. So if use the distance. Well, maybe we can just check the values we're passing, right? <sighs> Let's go there. No pain, no gain. Remember the ordeal to find who is using those? Let's go back there. Here. Colors, arrow size. Come on, no. Uh, the other one that the one we we here. I want to paint uh, print those points. Yep. One, two, three, four, and one. That annoys me so much that the clank form is not running. You did split this so nicely already. Uh, function. I really want it running. Did I disable it by accident? <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, back. What's complaining? Expect an expression. No, it doesn't expect an expression at all. It does expect something. Let me get it wrong. It is correct. Don't we have print if exposed in this file? Pretty sure we do. 
No, we don't. How do you do? Come on. Oh, there we go. I'm used to Python more than C nowadays. <clears throat> and it's so consumer in Python to add those leading commas. <clears throat> so when you diff. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's not try two things at the same time. What have I done recently? Uh, syntax error. Um, yeah, it's one too many guys, so no, it's correct. Wasn't this the one? Let's. Or is one of those things which I forgot to. No. The other thing's called, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. This is the thing that's called, being called instead. You can just do it here, it's fine. Uh, zero, here. Okay. <clears throat> I might still fix my clank format before the end of this because it's so annoying to me. I want this to get a values to understand what's in what. Yeah, this file is a bit too big for that. I know this already. Because. But that does give us a sense of wow of the scale. Okay. So those are the units. So for instance. Let's uh, let's uh, go. Blender has a way. I think it still has to. Okay, let's show that. To debug math visualization. The math is, but I don't think it's enabled by default. There we go. If you think this is my what you want, just keep it here. P zero C cove. Man, it's been so long. Uh, vector. I'm just copy and paste. I don't remember if take at least or let's see if it works. Yep. Ah, here. <clears throat> you won't be able to see it. Oh, let me try to make this better. There we go. So that's P1 over there. So that's a blender has some interesting ways to help people to debug visual mathematical coding. Let's just 
That's P1. Yep. Now it's P2. It's a nice way to check the order. I think we're getting to the meat of this video. P2. Yep. And then P4. Not P3. Okay. Nice. And then I found the distance between. I was right in the order, but basically it's the distance is going to be. We have a built in distance. Now it's P3 minus P0. That's the vector. And the length of the vector. One hundred twenty-four. So going back to where we were, I was saying five, but really it's more like a hundred. What was the example? One hundred twenty-four. For one of them, I don't even know which one was it. But anyway, give us a, a, a measure of the scale. So if it is 120, 5, even okay. So if that's so we actually taking the distance, now we're talking about 5 times, 20 times what we had before. This shouldn't matter either way. Oh, yeah, because they line uh, absolute. So if this is 100, let's say it's every 10, be better. 10, and then 30, or 20, and 30. To 40, and 50. 60 and yada yada. Um, hard to see goal, but let's close this. I just and that's why I just wanted the scale, otherwise, it's ha huh. oh, nice. And now, even if you change, it's working. Each again, it's not calculating the real distance. And of course, it's uh, not creating a loop or anything. It's pretty cool, it's actually ah, it's so nice. The big question, of course, is it is really so nice. <laughs> if this is really going to work, and I think it will. I think it will. Let's see if hands replied, otherwise, I'm gonna find it in the, in the internet the formula. No closed form solution for calculating the length of a Bayesian curve. Adding up the length. There's no formula for that? No. No way. Shocked. Must be. But for now, it's fine. Honestly, maybe even for the final shader, this is fine. Might not 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 <clears throat> not this, mind you, but the overall uh, approximate length. Because like, who cares? Why bother? Just cleaning up a little bit. Now let's get the. So that also means the dash width in this example was ten, right? Now let's use this all the way to the end, and then we pass this as a parameter. Let's copy this over and, and try to understand what what is this line doing. 
This is a long line, is what we're calling this. Let's rename. There we go. I got a normalized distance. And then, oh, we have the dash width and then the dash factor, which is this. So, and then. I have to guess, and I don't, so I won't. Uh, for now, I'm going to have the dash. This, I'm trying to cover to think. If I'm talking about the distance along the line, let's use a. Let's make it visual. Let me close this otherwise. <clears throat> Let's make it visual. So I have my line here. And the distance along the line is 0, 1, 0.5 here. If I divide the distance along the line with the dash unit. Oh, the distance along the line is actually what it did like was a 200, 100, 120, right, 60. We divide one this by the line dish, so it's gonna be zero, here's gonna be six, here's gonna be 12, here's gonna be three, nine here. Let's, no, no. So this is the, then divide it and then the fraction. Why do you care about the fraction, sir? So the fraction is how far we are to... I'm not very happy with this formula. Maybe because I'm not following it. Yeah, I think I'm not following it so much. Oh, we need to, we, uh, because I have no idea what's the because it, <clears throat> because the dash factor dash factor is calculated. Because the dash factor is calculated later. So whatever. So technically it's if if uh, dash factor is more than one, why are we using F in a GLS shader? We can't. Forbidden. If it's one. We want it, else if thing we don't know yet, it's changing the color according to that code, and otherwise we discard it. Give me the dash factor. No, it is once for the whole thing. Yeah, anything that's more than one is, is is just to indicate that hey we do it because the line is not dashed like here but it can be 0.5 you fully didn't grasp what the heck but let's and this is gonna be how we draw the different how we're gonna draw uh, the different lines because for the data flow we're just gonna have the dash Factor as uh, as one. Yep. So a big to do here, and then by the way, dash factor one for data flow. Okay.
still don't buy these, but let's let's see. Let's. Oh, so nice. <laughs> so nice. I feel like I should stop it here. Share it. Sharing is caring. I'm looking at well, one of the questions we had uh, in the drawing to know is whether it's to what do you call uh, Las Vegas UI it's flickering and changing because for instance if I move my node you're gonna see the this changes a little bit right I confess it gets a little bit distracting because if the if the curves are are not curved, for instance. If they're a straight line, we don't see it so much, right? Here's uh, There's something wrong with the algorithm because in this case sorry one thing at a time uh, the dashes are decreasing over time it's not good you can see here the spacing is big and here the space is, is very small oh very small but And I assumed if, since my curvature is zero, the, the distance function should be quite accurate. And regardless, it's because from Bezier, the real the first point is not a real point. This I can also leave for, for patch review. Honestly, I'm happy with this already. Um, visually, I don't like the Maybe I do like the dashed lines. Just look at the code itself. Let's comment the code a little bit and share it again. Um, um, and this is honestly, I don't worry about, I'll leave the compiler to optimize this. To do uh, have them as uniforms and then let's even change this to something different just to see how it looks. I'm recording something. You're welcome to join. I'm recording a video of me trying to do. But, but <laughs> we got points. But here you can see as well how something is not right. Yeah, we need to, to investigate this. Maybe it's part of the whole. Yeah. 
Let's finish up my things. Uh, or function for. Okay. Um, uh, prox. Uh, prox to my. I don't think we need the real one. I think that's honestly that's good enough. Oh, that's why I had this off. Sorry about that. I just do a second pass on the patch itself. Just to share. Okay, it's really that simple then. It's beautiful. Oh. Yeah, sorry, just going on. Move, arc, paste. Let's copy this again. Let's interact a bit. Oh, recall. But this is my code for the images above. Uh, someone's explaining here why uh, about this question. So let's hold the chat a little bit. I think I will stop this recording right now. This is as far as I wanted to go with anyways. I think I'm rather happy with the solution. I think I'm gonna send this as a patch for a prototype. That's how I can rebuild. And now send as a proof of concept test. Yeah, I really don't like how... I think there's something Technically unpleasant about it. But I think I'll, I'll send as a pack just to start a conversation on how we do it properly. It was almost like one hour, so stop it here. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any suggestions, anything you want to add, any questions, let me know. I'm going to be replying to the first video for some time. Bye bye.